Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope you're well. Sorry I'm a wee bit late. Uh, it's Stuart here from Hot Forex. Today it's all about stochastics, uh, something that's been around uh, for yeah, 60, 50, 50, 60, 70 years, something like that, um, invented by a US trader. Uh, so usual uh, issues uh, or admin. Um, let me just get the video recording set up. Hopefully everybody can hear me uh, and uh, we'll get started in a minute. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stuart here from Hot Forex. Welcome to our Wednesday uh, webinar today. It's all about uh, stochastics um, and how they can help you with your uh, with your trading. A great little indicator that's been around for a long time. Um, so, uh, usual admin administration things before we get going. Uh, if that slides will move, oh, let's have a look. Here we go. So, um, usual questions. Um, any issues or any questions I don't answer in the webinar? Uh, please email me at webinarshotforex.com. Uh, any issues you got with the actual software, try reconnecting to the uh, system and uh, you should be okay there. But hopefully everybody can hear me and I'm not just talking to myself. So a quick yes in the box would be would be good before I move on. That's great. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, trading is risky and please read and understand the uh, disclaimer here in front of you. So those of the uh, new, uh, I've not heard me talk before, um, uh, commiserations. <laughs> uh, uh, um, my name's Stuart. Uh, my background is in the uh, city of London. Uh, I've been trading and investing uh, my own money since uh, 1997. Uh, and my trading uh, mantra is all about risk management. So if it's probable, I tend to take the trade. I try to keep things as simple as possible for me. Uh, Stochastics is part of my system, although it's not on my, on my uh, trading platform, most a lot of the time it's actually embedded in uh, some of the the, the, the the little program I use, and also uh, time frames. I look at multiple time frames, what the higher time frames are trading. I try to trade with the trend basically, and if I'm going against the trend, I'm very aware of it, uh, and you know uh, the targets and stop losses are much more uh, closer and tighter. Therefore, but the most important thing is to know yourself. This business is a a mind game. What's going on here between your between your ears uh, and understanding yourself, accepting that you lose a lot, uh, managing your risk, not risking too much on each individual trade and learning from every every single presentation. OK, so um, sorry about that, John. It's, it's my uh, my northern accent uh, if it's too many years. Uh, but basically, uh, that's my approach to um, trading. So today we're going to look at stochastics, fast, slow, Different oscillators uh, as a momentum indicator, uh, where they came from, settings, time frames, this idea of overbought areas, oversold areas, um, on where we go from there, how it helps us. Uh, divergence, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's very significant simply because it doesn't happen very often. And it's a, a, a stochastics and other oscillators can be very good at uh, identifying this divergence. So they tend to perhaps give you a bit of a heads up or a um, a, a, a warning uh, that uh, things are about to change. So here we go. Uh, this is straight out of uh, I think it's investing the investing media. I think where, where we got this from or Investopedia. Uh, so it's basically the key thing is it's a moment. It's an oscillator, and you'll find it under your on, under your, all trading platforms under the oscillator bat tab. Uh, but it's all about momentum. So it's degree. It's the movement. It's how how much energy there is because that's what momentum is all about isn't it it's how much further energy we've got left to move and energy is you know part and parcel of, of of what i trade so it's comparing the closing price of a particular asset and it works across uh, as with lots of indicators um uh, they work across all asset classes so whether you're trading commodities forex um indices or, or stocks they, they this indicator works just as well across them all so it's it's the closing price against the previous over the certain period that you're counting, and obviously the longer the period or the shorter the period, it 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 affects the degree the the, the uh, sensitivity of the actual indicator. It's simple maths that's involved, and that's what this one's on. Right? The second point here, this uh, sensitivity is all about adjusting the time period that you're looking at. So we'll have a look at that as well. You see how the how the graph smooths and 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 peaks depending on how long the time period is you're looking at. 
key thing is the fact that it's, it's like a lot of oscillators, it's actually range bound. So the, the range is zero to 100. And the standard, the, the idea is that once we're at these extremes, a bit like, a, you know, with Bollinger Bands, once we're at the extreme Bollinger Band level, the probability is that we're going to turn around. But obviously, not always. Uh, but that's that's the simple theory behind it. So because it's range bound and this number, the one to zero is zero to 100 is fixed. Um, so it's how quick and quickly we get to that overbought area or how quickly we get that overzone, uh, that undersold area. So it's all about momentum, not necessarily the, the idea of being, it's not measuring overbought, it's measuring momentum, remember, that's the key thing. A lot of people get confused with um, these oscillators and stochastics in particular, uh, expecting it just because it's got into the, uh, it's over 80 or it's at 85, it's gonna go down. Uh, it doesn't always do that. Just like other oscillators, like RSI gets over 70. A lot of people say, right, we'll sell it. Well, no, because it can stay over 70, it can stay over 80, whatever your parameter is uh, for a certain period of time. What you want to be looking at is when it starts coming out of those zones. So it's the zones you're looking at, these oversold and oversold, oversold and overbought zones. I, I, this idea of a threshold, okay? So the basic premise is the uh, anything over 80 indicates we're near the top of this high low range and anything under 20 indicates we're near the bottom of this low range but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to turn around okay um as i say it was invented by an, an american guy called george c lane back in uh, 1955 i think he first issued it uh, but he was you know he was a trader himself he was a, a very good speaker and an educator and, and and part of the technical and the emerging technical analysis um idea and so it's been around for a long time and still today it's one of the most popular indicators many uh, i remember when i first started trading i had uh, i think i had bollinger bands a stochastic and a moving average they were the, the three things i started with and fiddled with them uh, and stochastics was the one i fiddled with the most and i couldn't really get my head around with it at it at the time but uh, it was um all became clear after a little while. So it's been around a while. It's still used today. Many people criticize it because you know we're in the we're in the 21st century. These indicators are slow, are slow to respond. Yes, they are. They can be you know again depending on the settings. But just like any any technical indicator, uh, they're just that. They're indicators of what may happen based on previous price action. Not necessarily saying what is actually going to happen. So never ever you know uh, just use one indicator. Never ever. Uh, put all your eggs in one basket. And as the man himself said, you know, it doesn't follow price, it doesn't follow volume, it's following the speed of change, the rate of change, the speed of momentum. And this is a quote that I always hold back uh, from Lane, it, you know, as a rule, the momentum changes direction before price. And that's one of its key um, things that people like about it. It gives you a bit of a heads up, a possible, um, uh, a turning turning point, running out of energy, running out of momentum. We may be about to change direction, or we may be just going into a into a, a period of consolidation before we then continue the trend in the in the right direction. The momentum might just be slowing before it off again. So that's all it's measuring. It's measuring momentum, remember, um, uh, and over a specific time frame. When he first put this together. Um, it, back in the 50s, it was typically used for trading stocks and uh, commodities on the daily time frame on the futures exchanges as well. So there were uh, the traders it, back in the 50s and 60s and 70s when he was first developing, when it was first developed, uh, that typically were looking at a 14-day period at the end of day trade. So at the end, as, as the markets closed, uh, using that as their standard setting. So a lot of the earlier early oscillators. Uh, came with this 14-day default. Now, come on to how the MT4 is set up in a wee bit. Okay, so basically, there's lots of things you don't know. We you hear you might hear of a, a, a slow stochastic, a, a fast stochastic. Um, basically, on your MT4 platform, if you're training from the MT4 platform, you have these two key lines. We have the percentage K, which is typically the higher number when you're programming, it, or is the higher number when you're setting on your uh, charts and the percentage D, which is the lower number. So we've got these two stochastic lines, which are basically, um, they're not moving average, but they're smoothed with a moving average. So the, th the third number gives you this uh, moving average. The key thing with them, again, is remember we're, me we're measuring momentum. So it's the possibility of a change in trend or a trend reversal. This idea, second one is really this idea that we're into these overbought or oversold areas 
and what might happen next. Um, and it's also, you know, people use the traders use them for either entering trades as well as exiting trades. So for creating entry levels, uh, targets, triggers, and exit triggers as well. So if you're going, so for instance, if you were just, if you, you know, if you're going, if you had entered short here because we've come out of this oversold area and, you know, wait to close your trade till we got into the over, sorry, the overbought area till we got into the oversold area or touch the oversold area and it crossed again. That's so short there, out there. Obviously, very simple to look at when we got this sort of movement here. Um, but you, you apply it with other indicators to your charge. So it's all about period, and this is the maths that's involved. So it's all about this percentage K. It, it's the current close less minus the lowest point of the period that you're counting. So whether it's 14, 5, 3, 2, whatever it is. And that sits on top of the highest point in the period that you're counting, the three, four, 15 days or whatever it is, minus this lowest point again. So that's this point divided by that gives you your percentage K, this, this, this one line here. And then the signal line, this D line here is the is the um, the, the smooth moving average. So that then here it says the three period moving average gives you a, a, of the percentage K. So this gives you the one line, and this is a, a moving average of this line here. So it's the three th three period moving average of this line, and that's how the the uh, K and the D these these lines relate to one another. So one becomes a signal line, and uh, one is the uh, percentage K line, okay, and that, well, we'll see that when we look at uh, look at some charts. Now you set it up. I have it as green and red on my um, indicators here. It's red and white, um, but uh, it's, again, it's up to you how you want to set it up. So, uh, as I say, default setting when you bring it out of your MT4 platform is five three three. What does this mean? Well, it means that the five relates to the percentage percentage K. Uh, percentage D is set at three, and the moving average is three. So it typically, this is I don't know what this is on. This is uh, four. This is euro dollar uh, against four. Again, uh, this is the euro dollar on the H4 time frame. So you can see here, set at five three, stochastic set at five three three. Here we were oversold down here, just down here, and then we got oversold here. So you can see it's sort of that's correlating to this area here. And then we got oversold, sorry, overbought that, sorry. <laughs> overbought here so this was this rose into this area before we got this price the prices got up so again you see the the stochastic is is ahead of the price here so it's a, as the price is going up the stochastic's moving up as well so that's you know it's trending with it. it's no divergence actually converging with the price so the price is going up your stochastic lines are moving up and then we roll over uh our tops out this this line here and then we cross here so that's suggesting mm, we've crossed um uh, in the overbought zone. So that's a strong indicator that we, we may be going down, but the trigger and we move out of the overbought zone would be here. So your entry would be here and that's tracked down there. Now it goes all the way down and then it becomes oversold very, very quickly in the space of uh, a few, you know, that's a, a day and a half, isn't it? We've gone from oversold, sorry, overbought to oversold very quickly. So again, same principle, actually under a moving average there as well on this particular on the on the price chart, and then we've turned around. So so the higher the K, uh, the smoother the chart. So if you increase this number here, this first K number, we get less of these overbought and over uh, sold zones. Obviously, so you so when you do get into those areas, it, it perhaps becomes more significant. So as with all indicators, it's all about sensitivity. So you play around with the numbers uh, and find that the, the level that fits you. What I wouldn't recommend you do is play, you know, play around with them too much. Yes, they, they change from time frame to time frame. Uh, typically, they may be set 15, 3 and 3 for the one hour, uh, 14, 3 and 3 for the daily. But, you know, the default that comes out of MT4 is usually um, usually quite good. So, you know, stick to that and see how that fits with your particular trading time frame. OK, so if you want less indicators, increase the K characteristic. And we'll get into overbought and oversold. Uh, on a less frequent basis, uh, uh, but perhaps the, sig the significant of the signal might be more uh, significant. So that's the key. Remember, it's as I say, it's not just that it's overbought, it's measuring momentum. So this strong move up here on the price action that we've got up here, see it gone, went all the way up to here before, but the momentum was still 
moving upwards. See, we, see that that peak there. It's not a very good, uh, very good chart here. That that price has just kept going up, although the momentum has moved down significantly as we move down. So the momentum on that next leg up, this these three here, wasn't it wasn't as strong as that first initial move from a momentum point of view because it didn't. Although the price is higher, we didn't get into an overbought zone. So again, don't don't think just because it's all directly related to the price. At this point, let me just re, let me just say that again. At this point here, we're in an overbought zone. At this point here, although the price is obviously much lower than we are here, can you see here that the peak of the second this second and third peak here didn't actually get into an overbought zone. So there's still some more momentum in there. Is what that's saying. The momentum. Um, it's still positive so it dips and it rises again and so it keeps going so here was the big first flurry the big first expansion of the price because it shot up so quickly and that's what we get with stochastic so remember just because we're into this zone here overbought or here oversold doesn't necessarily mean uh, that we're going to stay in it for very a for very long if we keep these numbers short or b that it means it's going to go back up you know, it takes a while before it turns around. Sometimes here it's it's quite volatile because our numbers, are, these second two numbers are short, so uh, we're turning around quite quickly. So we're getting lots of opportunities for overbought and oversold. Even though generally the price here, as you can see from here to here, the price is generally tracked up. Okay, so by the time we get to here, the momentum has gone up, then down, and then up again. Now, down quite aggressively, but the price has continued in its trend, doesn't it? Here, if you were just trading the moment, the momentum off the the moving average, uh, we've got here. Uh, Dave, Charles has asked, "What's the best properties for a one-hour time frame?" Well, you quite commonly see, as I said, Charles, the standard default setting is five, three, and three on the MT4, but you quite often see fifteen, um, three, and three for. Um, uh, for one hour settings as well. I'll show, we'll show you so how, how it varies and we'll bring up some, if we've got some time, we'll bring up some live charts and we'll see how we change the, the settings. But 15, uh, three and three is quite a common setting as well. Or, um, and 14, three and three sometimes upon the daily time frame simply because that's capturing uh, the last 14 periods, last 10 hours, 15 hours on the on the hour time frame. So think about that. Remember, that's what you're capturing. This this number here, this cave number, it ca captures the period. So do you want to look back here? It's look, on the four hour time frame. It's looking back 20 hours altogether, or four or five, sorry, um, um, uh, periods. Okay, so five four hour candles. Uh, it's counting back. Uh, that's what's um, um, it's counting. No go, Washi, you, you haven't really. No, it's all about stochastic. Stochastic is a momentum indicator, basically. And I've just touched on the fact that, you know, the, this, the, the, the classic is the overbought and oversold criteria. So over the 80 zone is, a, is apparently, um, you know, we're into an overbought area and we're looking to perhaps enter a short trade as it comes back out of this overbought area. And when we're under 20, this is the classic settings for stochastics. Uh, we're under 20, we're oversold, and we're looking to perhaps move up. But the key thing from this first couple of slides, actually, is, is it's a momentum indicator, not necessarily a, you know an overbought and oversold indicator. It is showing you that, but it's all about the degree of momentum. And as you can see here, we got very, very high very quickly, but the trend continued. But it also went all the way down here, but this strong tr price trend just kept going up, didn't it? So, you know, don't, as with all indicators, don't hang your hat on just one particular indicator they need to be used with other indicators as well to get the best sort of combination of, uh, of of trading platforms for you okay so that's the default setting five three and three <coughs> so as i say the settings that are higher the number so this this is exactly the same time frame it's the dollar uh yen yesterday in the one hour time frame this one's this stochastic set five three three this one here on the left on the right, depends how you're looking at your screen. And this one here, it, it, we've doubled it to 10. So you can see it's 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 small. It, it's it's a smoother movement. It's, the movement's very similar, obviously, because the three and the three remain the same. Uh, but here you can see on the five, we didn't actually get oversold. Here on the 10, we got oversold in both these indicators. So at this point, that was oversold, and it was, and the um, signal line crossed the uh, fast K, and we got a, a buy trigger there there that would have been a, a long position there from the stochastic and then we went 
immediately within the next hour we had it ramped all the way up and we ran right into the overs hold zone so although we didn't get an indicator on the five we did on the 10 and here we were oversold as well in the same time frame a little bit a little bit later see can that one's that one's sitting there you see how this one is a bit more spiky than this one this one's because it's spread over a longer time so we then came out of the oversold area got a sell signal there uh, and then we drifted down, drifted down, drifted down. And then again, so you can see it, you could have entered at this point here as that's gone there out, as it's come out of the overbought zone. And we've drifted down for a few hours. Or the, as you can see, the momentum's drifting down, which you can see the price isn't drifting down particularly. I had a big candle down here, but that's related there. But, you know, candle was still, we retraced above our, you know, above our, well, obviously we entered here but above the previous candle so we may have you know depending where your stop loss was you may have even stopped out on that but the stochastic here as you can see is still trending down similarly on this one with the 533 we're still trending down and we enter the oversold uh area earlier than we do here so we and we dip down further so here we're oversold now at this point and then we turn so that might have closed our this close of that candles we've gone into oversold then oversold again we might have closed our position then or waited till it's turned around and turned around and then entered long again because this has come down. We're now bursting out. We're just about to break. We could have left it for the next candle to confirm the breakout. And then we've run out, but we haven't got into an overbought area here. So we've run out of energy. We've run out of momentum. Remember, remember, we're measuring momentum here. So this one hasn't got to the 80, whereas this one, the 533, did get to being a bit over, suggesting it was in the overbought area, but these big spikes as well uh, on the uh, on the um, on the on the candles here uh, would also suggest. Well, you know, there's no more buys up at this hair area. We've got big tall wicks on there. We've got a you know uh, it's a, a shooting star potential set up on the on the candle patterns as well. Uh, on this particular, and now Washi, you're talking about this. This is my, this is the one-hour default uh, setting. So this, the, the moving average on here, the green lines on here are the Bollinger Bands. There's lots on this one at the moment. The, but we're concentrating on the, the stochastics today. But the moving averages are here. It's, it's part of my EMA, the exponential moving average crossing strategy. So the, um, the moving averages here are the, the five and the nine here. So I, ten, and then the midpoint, of the Bollinger Bands, is the second trigger. If you want to follow how that moving average trending um uh, signal works um uh, watch the ema crossing uh, strategy so you could add this oscillator this momentum indicator to the to the to your moving average setup to give you a combination of what's going on because here you can clearly see because we've been in very much in a sideways action yes is this yesterday or the day before i can't remember uh, well, since the 14th, we've been very much a sideways action, haven't you? So the moving averages is here are going sideways as well. And there's no trend there. There's no clear direction. Uh, we've ran up there, we've ran up there, and we come back down. So there's nothing really going on. So the moving averages are chopping around, and you're getting false, false signals. So on the moving average system, that would have entered. You would have got in there, and perhaps you would have got your first target, the first uh, ATR. But then it's turned around very quickly, and then. It looks to go short, didn't go short, didn't go short, didn't go short, went short. There, there, there that was one we failed out. So we come back down. That was, the EMA system would have been saying short this one because we've got we've cro we're under the the actually they crossed there, didn't they? No, it would have been there. Actually, would have got that would have been the short position there because that's crossed. The blue's gone under the red. We're under the midpoint of the Bollinger Band. But here you see, uh, if we'd had the stochastics, we might have already been in it back up here. Um, one thing I'll come on to in a minute. This trigger has also coincided with the break in the midline. So the midline, a 50 line, which is often not on, you don't put that on as default, but I, I, sometimes, I like to add the 50 line because it adds to the momentum. Once the momentum's, yes, we've got the trigger here and we're moving down. Sometimes it can bounce off that midline and not actually get into the key area. So the 50 can give you another option to actually add to the momentum, add to your trade as it breaks through that and it's heading down towards the uh, the 20 zone and the oversold area. So uh, that would have been a that would have been it would have been an entry. And it would have been a successful ATR target um, here initially, and then it's turned around. Then it's gone long here, uh, so that would have been triggered the, the, uh, there. And again, that may have just got to target before it's turned around again and close out but anyway let's just say it's it's measuring momentum it's an oscillator it, it's bounded uh this idea of uh, overbought and oversold and there's a couple more examples here so this overbought and oversold so here this one this one is again this is up at the daily time frame 
this one said 14 three and three so again we've come down we've gone into the oversold eric hopefully you can see all this here so oh uh, actually let's do the overbought one first so um where we are so here one so we've rallied up and here you can see how we've come out of the actually let's do it the other way around let's do the number two first so oversold so we've come down and we've gone into the oversold area here already see how we oh, it's already gone the both lines both the the signal line and the uh, percentage k are already oversold but we still got more legs this is a great example of not jumping in too early just because we're oversold doesn't mean you know we can't go any low and it did didn't it look it went for another one two three four five six seven hours it went down before it turned around here we're getting a bit of a suggestion there so there we start to turn around and we're out there okay so that takes us out and then here and then again you know the the signal system we broke over the midpoint of the, well just about actually it's not <laughs> over that midline i've put in there so we put the 50 in that one and we've just about uh, but it hasn't gone down so the moment see how that candle's taking you down but the momentum continues up the, the stock stochastic is still moving up so that was just a, a retrace of this four or five candle up we retrace and then it was off again and then we eventually got to oversold at this point this big tall candle here and then we came uh, out of it here and uh, it probably wouldn't have signaled here because there's a gap here so this must be the end of day so it's a end of this is friday and monday potentially so there's, there we go there's a, there's a gap in the market so you wouldn't have got until there so it wouldn't have so you've gone short there but this is another good indicator of how the neutral zone the 50 if you put the extra 50 line in can help you as well so here it looked like it was going down but as we move down you can see we've hit the 50 and then we've bounced off it and as we stand today as far as stochastic is concerned on the daily time frame on the on the cable it's overbought you can see here we've gone up but again we broke into the overbought about here whatever day that was the 11th or 12th september but for one two three four five six seven trading sessions thereafter we're still overbought but we're still going up okay so that wouldn't have helped you would you? if you're looking to short just because we're up here and this is getting higher you get stopped out because it's going up it's going up 131.75 when i did this yesterday and as we all know hopefully you've been watching this we're over we're, out, we're, we're at the top of this board now today we're at one we're over 132 uh cable with the um uh the strong inflation or the uh missing the inflation data this morning but anyway uh sometimes the value line in stochastic enters the overbought sold area but the signal line doesn't is it still considered overbought or also must line end no that's so i'm just going to come on to that in a minute this the strong signal to get out is when both when the cross uh, let me just re re repeat that it's on another slide in a minute no Bashi. the cross should take place within the overbought or the oversold zone okay so let me just say that again the cross we can see here on the chart needs to take place at a value that's over 80 or under 20 okay so the signal line and the um uh the k line need to cross the cross needs to take place in the oversold and overbought area if it, if it takes place in this neutral area it's not as strong so that's indicating the momentum isn't as strong so that's what you want you want to it's signaling this is strong this has got energy we're going to go so you need to then um jump on board that's what it's giving you it's giving you a bit of a heads up and that's why uh, i like putting the 50 in as well because it you know it, it can stall there like we did here we went sideways didn't we moving average don't help into the 15 we went sideways the momentum was still generally in the upward direction the slope was still with the price so we were still converging the price was going up and moving at the stochastic was moving up uh the rsi the other oscillator the rsi that's on here was also rising as well at that point so all relatively positive uh, what settings are you using for the moving average and the bollinger bands right now bollinger bands are just set as default uh these are actually two, uh, two and a half deviations but it doesn't matter so they're standard settings so it's 20 and two and a half but two it doesn't really make that much of a difference so and the moving averages i use on this one out this is actually on the daily time frame but the moving averages here are the five and the nine exponential moving averages and this is this is a system i use on the one hour time frame but as i say it works quite well on the uh daily time frame as well so the five and the nine exponential moving averages cross and then the second signal on that particular system is for the, the break of the midpoint of the bollinger band okay but we're just told we're just concentrating today on the stochastic element 
which isn't really part of that system. But if you want to add the stochastic, it can give you um, added confidence or give you a question mark over an entry. And that's sometimes the problem when you have too many indicators on your chart on which ones do you trust the most. Um, so, but stochastics is, is very popular, it's well used, uh, and um, it's just sometimes a matter of finding the numbers, the settings that fit your time frame and fit your setup. So let me just repeat, the default setting for the uh, MT4 platform comes out at 533. Lots of daily settings are set at this. If you train at the daily time frame, lots of set you see lots of settings at this at 14.33 or 14.53. Or don't you know? Don't waste lots of time fiddling with these numbers or a lot because they don't really make that much of a difference. Uh, and again, down at the one-hour time frame, this is quite a good setting as well, 14.33 or 15.33 as well. Okay, or 15.55. Just you know, find the one that works for you. There isn't, there, to be honest, there isn't a, uh, there isn't a, 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 as with any indicator, there isn't a magical number. There isn't the perfect number. I, when I first, stochastics was one of those things, you know, over 20 years ago now, I remember fiddling with them for ages, thinking I'll just get one right. And it was that of all the indicators I fiddled with more than any of the others, to be honest. Uh, I accepted the 20 period moving average. I sort of accepted the 200 and 100 period moving average. But stochastics, I, I, you know, messed around with quite a lot and it, you know, did me no good whatsoever, to be honest. So find a setting, leave it uh, and uh, see how it see how it works for you. Because that's the main thing. You need a system, you need good discipline, you need good risk management and the rest of it can really fall into place. You know, keep a lot size that's appropriate for your account. Most people lose money trading because they risk too much and they use a lot size that is far too big for their account. But uh, anyway, that's a that's a, a mantra for another day. So um, anyway, stochastics, um, overbought, oversold. This is a, just another another slide on this idea of, of what Magwashi asked about, uh, about them crossing. So you're looking for the uh, the cross gives you the direction that you're going in. So you need to be within, this is just a rear, uh, uh, um, emphasizing this idea that the cross needs to occur within the overbought or the oversold zone. So uh, if we need to be over 80 and below looking to go down or above uh, when you're in, when you're oversold in the um, or, uh, uh, below 20, we need to be above the uh, slow moving average and crossing up as we got here and going up here. We got crossing down. We went down here. We crossed here and we, we've gone up. OK, obviously that's in its in its entirety or that's in its in isolation. The, the stochastics obviously never use any indicator on its own. Add an indicator, you know, whether it's, you know, gives you a backup, whether, the, uh, you know, we've had a, a move in, a cross of a moving average or uh, another another oscillator is pointing, is, is in, you know, in also pointing up as that one's pointing up. So we've got, you know, convergent um, oscillators there. We've got a break over the midpoint of the Bollinger Band there as well after that, that move. So that's positive. That's positive. Uh, we've got a bit of resistance here, this blue line, the 50 period and the top of the Bollinger Band. But, you know, the momentum here is still indicating this is going up, doesn't it, on this, this particular this particular chart. And again, see how it's probably, uh, the, the 50 line isn't on here, but it's probably stalled at the 50 line on the stochastic. So that's why I, I like to add the 50 line on the stochastic uh, setup as well. And if you want some, I mean, it's very, very easy to set up. If you want to stick it on there, we can do can this 533 be used on one minute chart? John, if you're a, if you're a scalper, uh, yes, you can. Yes, because the 533 gives you that that volatility that we saw on the first uh, chart setup. Sorry, I missed your question there. Um, uh, so you get this uh, strong uh, volatility. So we're getting this lots of up and down, which is what you want as a scalper, because that's what you you want to be in and out for a few pips, isn't it? If you're trading off the uh, off the one minute chart. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. No problem. Uh, where were we? Um, uh, next chart. Yeah. So this is basically uh, so I'm just re-emphasizing the cross needs to play take place either in the in the overbought zone or in the under oversold zone. Okay. Right. One of the really strong and powerful things about stochastics and all oscillators is divergence. It's difficult. It's not difficult to identify, but it's more difficult to identify than convergence because they're going in the opposite direction. But as this line says at the top there, it happens less often. So when it does, it has particular significance. But again, like with all indicators and with all trading, you need patience to wait for the break 
of the moment. So it's not guaranteed that something's going to happen because often things can be out of kilter. They can start divert or diverge for a little while and then go back into being in in uh, in tandem, in trend. So they can diverge and nothing happens. Then suddenly then go back to being converged and all go pointing in the right direction as well. So it needs uh, an extra bit of patience, an extra bit of discipline when you're uh, applying it. Okay, so it's not a certain sign it'll mark a reverse or an entry signal. But it does give you, again, it gives you a heads up that the, the stochastic is ahead of the price action. Okay, that's exactly, remember how, what, when he, for the, remember the, that quote of the, one of the first slides I put up, it's all, it tends to be ahead of the price action. So it gives you this heads up and this alert. So you can spot this with this indicator with other indicators as well. So an indicator move does not go along with the price action for the instrument over a period of time. This again out of the, out of the, out of the textbook, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this breakdown in the price. So the, the energy, remember what we're measuring with, remember what we're measuring with, um, uh, st with the stochastic all the time is momentum. So the momentum is starting to slow down and it's actually turned around. That's what the, that's what the divergence will be showing us. But the price is ignoring it. The price still keeps going up. So is that suggesting that the clever money is starting to get out? We're running out of energy. We're running out of buys if we're going up. We're running out of sellers if we're going down. Stochast the stochastic and the divergence of the stochastic is giving you that potential uh, first signal that things are slowing down. So so first to to apply, you need to see where we're going. So you need some sort of trending market that we're going, we're going in one direction or we're going sideways. You know, again, it can be the same thing. If we're in a sideways market, we're going to be looking to break out. And again, stochastics can help you with that, with the breakout as we break out over the 50 or over the 20, if we've been under the, you know, under the, in those zones for a long time. We want to look at some direction indicator and look at this for divergence. It's probably easy to, show you a chart rather than talking about it so here right so bearish two types of diver two types of divergence we've got bullish divergence or bearish divergence so here we've identified and it's thanks to right these last few charts of all andrew's charts actually so i thank andrew for these uh, so here we've got the pound swissy and the price here as you can see is going let's just look at the price chart first off the price has continued up from here all the way up so our stochastic is being an up and down we went all the way down here look at that we were nearly, nearly over oversold there but as far as the price action was concerned it was, it was a couple of days it went under the 20 period moving average that's all in this long trend and then we shot up again then we got um then we got to our second or third peak of our oversold area see how we were oversold there we went down we were oversold there we didn't go down we didn't come out of the oversold there we kept going up we did then there it's broken down and broken down but see the momentum took us all the way down very quickly but price-wise, we didn't actually move that far. So again, that's suggesting that we're still in a strong price trend. Okay, so that's going up. So we shook that out, and then this very steep move here, a very, very steep move here through the middle of June. So we rallied up really aggressively there, and the candles are showing us that as well. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six days, a very aggressive move right out of the top of the Bollinger Band, new highs off the chart here, you know, in April, May, going up, um, sorry, uh, May, um, May, March going all the way back. So we price is still going up here. So that's an indicator. Okay. So we're still, so we dipped down, but again, the moving average holds dips just negative. And, you know, it wasn't enough. Some people would not have joined, you know, taken that retrace, got out at that, at the mid, mid point, of point, you know, people got in there, would have got burnt and taken out of the next day because we've gone high, we've gone higher again, but looks what's happening here. The momentum as all we're going up and with some big candles in this move, if you were just looking at the candle chart, uh, the stochastic is starting to suggest that the energy is running out because that high is lower than that high, but that price high there is higher than that high. So price is making new highs. The stochastic is making new lows. Okay, so we're running out of energy. It's taken a while. We've gone from the 12th of June to the you know end of July, so it's a month, but we're still going up, still going up. And it's suggesting is that we don't know at this point is this the high because we've gone down there and it's kept going up it's gone down there and it's kept going it's gone down there so what you'd look for this one that's yeah that's happening now that's interesting then we break through okay would you be you know here at this point you know i certainly wouldn't would you have been brave enough to take a short position in this very strong bull market i wouldn't i would have you know waited this is 
sideways. So again, here, although, again, we've got a bit of a screamer here. The stochastic is really giving you a heads up here because we've broken out of this over, overbought area here now. And we start, we dip down and we're down to, you know, the 60 zone. But the 20 period here for me has held. Has, has held. So we've gone this one, two, three, four, five, six days sideways. Mm, dip down and then that was the killer. You know, that's the killer. And that would, you know, for me, that would have been a possible entry because this is now starting to look down. But although we've ran into the uh, 50 and the retrace takes us back up some, again, some people would try to buy that. But here, the stochastic is now, the momentum is now running down. We're now, this is a strong, this is downtrend. So the, it's a head, head of this price move. So that's suggesting perhaps more weakness. And again, We've rallied up there over the 20 period, but then we come down and then we broke the 50 and that's shouting again. As we break through the 50, that would have been lots of buyers, sellers joining this, this momentum now as the momentum's built up and we've moved down. So see how the diversion doesn't happen very often because here, but when it does, it can be very significant. So as I say, price action makes higher high, uh, the stochastic makes lower highs. The trend is looking to reverse. So props of entry as we break out here. But again, you'd have to be brave to take that because we're still up. Break of that, suggesting the 20 period was holding, but the big old candle there. And that would have been, you know, if I'd been watching this one, that would have been my short position there. Um, so again, stochastic early warning system. And remember, as I said right at the beginning, what Lane said himself, the momentum changes direction. I'll start to change direction before price. And that's long. That's um what we can what we can see patricia's asked a very very uh, straightforward and sensible question with this uh, how long does it have to diverge before it becomes a change in direction well like with any trend patricia you, you're looking for at least one or two touches of the trend line before you can identify it's a trend okay so you could argue here we've been going up here so price has been going up here and, and we've got divergent prices there, haven't we? So we did go down, but not as much. You know, the slope was a, not as steep as we had the slope here, these three higher highs. So it it just rejected it. OK, but as with everything, Patricia, nothing works all the time. So that's what you want to be looking for. But don't try and overplay it. Don't get in too early just because it's looking like it's changed direction doesn't mean it's going to. And that, that, as I've just talk through the story here you can see the tr it's it it actually crossed here didn't it on the, this day here so we were all the way back here when the uh, the signal line crossed in the over uh, over the 80 zone and across looks like we were going down so we went you could have that if you know if you're purely trying to trade the old coming out of the overbought zone uh would have been the following day here but, you know, it would have went against you and then it would have made a new high. Would your stop loss have beat you? You would have probably been stopped out on that one, wouldn't you? Because your stop loss would have been, you know, up here, wouldn't it? Because uh, this is the new this is the new high. So you'd have had your stop loss above the recent high, I would guess. I'm not, I'm, I don't know. But uh, so you'd have been stopped out on that one. But it was still going down. So, you, you know, but then it didn't, did it? It went sideways. But this was the trick with the moving it with the, um, the stochastic on this one was it was still pointing down as a clear downtrend now although the price wasn't see the price wasn't very clear was it we were sort of sideways for this one two three four five six day period here before we had that big old shake out there when it broke out there that was the big one and then the, that one's already gone off and shot down so we're already down here on that one so to answer your question Patricia again you need to have, make sure you know got at least two or three connections before you can identify a trend and it depend on the time frame again it, it can it can go on and remember anything any trend line identification the more touches the more significant it is but trend lines like like support and resistance don't last forever so divergence um is key it doesn't happen very often but it's uh, when it does it can be quite powerful so that's bearish divergence where we've got a higher price and the indicator the stochastic is making lower lower highs Obviously, the convergent, the opposite of that, not convergence, the opposite of that is, uh, whoops, is bullish divergence where we have uh, prices uh, making lower lows here. So price actually makes lower lows, but the, the indicator is making higher lows. OK, if that makes sense. OK, so here we've got the indicator going up as the price comes down. It's not a great example, this one, because we've had this clip up here. But so strong downtrend. Uh, 
you know, started up here from a moving average point of view. Let's ignore the stochastic for the moment. Moving average, it broke here, but the stochastic came from this overbought area here, didn't it? So there we've crossed all the way up here. So again, let's see how much that, see how that's a, that's actually quite a good example of a, the overbought when it turned. So that has turned, uh, I can't, 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 I haven't got the line on it, but it's turned sort of around here, but it's taken a few more days before we've had the final break. So you've got in early there, but again, um, your stop loss would have been above these, this recent high. So that would have, that's a nice early indicator. Then you would have added extra on this day as it's broken. And I would have, you know, added extra on this day as we've broken under the 20 period there. And now we're off and running. And then perhaps another one on the end, on the break of this candle here, or that big tall wick there. because so it may have, you know, may have touched the 50 line as well. Again, that's why I like putting the 50 line on here as well. Uh, so add that as well. But here, anyway, to get to the point of the bullish divergence. So here we've got the, the price is trending lower, went side, went down very aggressively through the 50 period, then sideways at the 50 period, duh, 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 and then another leg down as we went through the 200 and down. So price is moving down, but the, uh, it's, I say it's not a great example, this one, but the, uh, the um, uh, bullish, uh, sorry, the uh, stochastic is, is moving, it's sort of moved up. But as again, if you'd had the 50 line on here, you could see, that that wasn't it didn't there was no more as it turned up it went it was back in line and it was converging this time not diverging so price is going down oh sorry price has gone down from there to there and that's virtually stayed flat so that's not a great example but that one was going up as that one was going up but then it turned because it ran into the 50 and then it crossed under the there you're not that you would take that because that's not um a, it's just a rejection of the 50 could have added to a, a, a Empty, uh, entered a potential short position, then it's ran off down very aggressively, and then it's broken the 200. That would have had it, and now we've got this into this oversold area now. So what's happening now? Well, we don't know, um, but so it may be looking to get back up off its knees, as the price action is also suggesting that we're at these new lows here. This is dollar CAD whenever this is, is from June. So um, up at 132, as we all know, it's continued to, to trip down from there in the, in the trend. So. Bullish diversion, bearish diversion doesn't occur that often. But when it does, it can be quite a significant movement. So basically, the the price and the and the indicator are going in opposite directions. That's all divergence means. And again, here we've only got the two uh, touches, which is perhaps why it's not as strong as it is. So again, early warning system, as Lane said himself, the momentum changes before the price action sometimes. Okay, it can be quite difficult to identify divergence sometimes. Okay, so the, the three or the two key uh, or the three key areas when you're trading uh, with the uh, with the stochastic. Let's just have a quick review before we before we wrap up. So possible reverse in trends. Okay, the the settings are really down to you. As I said, the settings come in at the standard five three three on the default on the. I'll bring on. Uh, I'll just finish this and I'll bring in the uh, the chart in a minute. We'll, we'll add one. Settings five three three. The higher the the first number, the big number, the smoother the the smoother the graph. Okay. So uh, the smaller, the more volatility, the more indicators you get. So the, the the standard settings tend to be about fifteen three and three for one hour, five three and three for the uh, perhaps shorter time frames. Uh, and um, uh, you know that 5.15.33 or 15.35 again doesn't really matter up on the daily time frames. Uh, I trade a live account with a stock as probably my main indicator. I've come across an issue and that's why I'm happy you organized this webinar. Okay, what's your issue, Washi? I'm not quite sure what you're saying there. So you're saying that your stochastic, your, the stochastic for you is your main indicator. That's fine. That's good. Remember, it's an oscillator. It's a momentum indicator. And not great. Um, should be going up as the trend's going up. Um, what is what is signal line? Can you? Yes. Let me. Let's uh, let's just bring in the. It might be easier if I bring it into the. Let me just finish uh, this. So we combine the signal line to give this overbought oversold. That's the dotted line. Uh, and the oversold over zone areas give us this idea of, you know, it may be turning around, but it may be in there for a little while. Let me just bring in, let's bring in the demo chart and it's probably easier to show you on a, a chart rather than trying to explain it. Um, right. Can everybody see that? Let me just make sure that fits there. There we go. Right. So um, let's just take this. Actually, let's have a look at this. Right. So hopefully you can see this. This is, um, this one is the daily pound chart, cable chart. And it, this the particular stochastic is set at uh, 
14, 3, and 3. What does that mean? What are we showing here? Well, we've got a green line and the red dotted line. Let's have a look at what the, the, the indicator is showing us. So indicator list, there we go. So we click on the stochastic and it tells you what it's showing. So here, right, let's have a look, everybody. So we have the K line, which is the 14 period. And if we go to the colors, you can see that the K line is the green line, okay? So the green line is the K percentage K line and the red dotted line is percentage D line. And this one's set at three. So this is a slow, uh, and this is the moving average is also set at three. So we've got 14, three and three. And say we, on this particular setting, and I'll change it in a minute and you can see how it, how it, how it, how it, it's, it, it makes it much more peaky. Okay, let's go, let's actually, let's, take it the other direction let's take this all the way up to say 28 let's double the k line you'll see how the this the signal line and the k line will smooth out we come less into the um into the extremes okay so i need to close that there we go so see how it smoothed it out so here we're set at 28 3 and 3 we've been oversold according to this all this time here at this particular setting so how appropriate this is not really because you know all that time here as you can see on here we've been you know we went it went short there so that would have been our indicator that would have been that's fine so we, then we've gone short but was but then we're oversold and it crosses down here doesn't it that, that though you can't actually see that very well but let's just bring that up right. so so we've crossed here. So the green line is now going over the red line. So here at this point, this is saying this is oversold. This is looking to go up, but it doesn't, does it? It's crossed and it's crossed again, crossed again, crossed again. And we're still, and it's not until we get to this point here where we've crossed the cross here. Okay. So that's an indicator that we're going up, but we're not out of the oversold zone yet. We don't get out of the oversold zone to yet till that point. So that would be your, your, you know, a potential long position, but see what happens. We go up, but not very much, do we? It's like, because it's so smooth and so slow to react. It takes ages before we get up and we've lost all that momentum. You know, the momentum's run out of steam. And interestingly, see how this one has like, got the 50 on it? We don't get to the 50. So it runs out of momentum before it gets to 50. And then we dip down again and we come over sold. Are we going up? Well, no. And that's the problem when, you know, the, the settings are too high. Okay. So let's just change the settings again. So if we click on the uh, indicator list, so it's stochastic. So let's change this back to the, the default, the five, and you see the significant difference you get when we have the much lower uh, K uh, setting, much lower K period. So we get much more uh, volatility. So if we change that and close that um, here on the daily, it hasn't changed it that much, but if we go down to the lower time range, so, so here on the five period, we got into a, an oversold zone here. So if we go down to the lower time frames. You can see much more, much more activity here. So oversold, uh, sorry, overbought here, but we're still going up. So all this area we were over, uh, overbought according to uh, 533 on the, the one hour time frame. Uh, but that, you know, that didn't work, did it? That was a, that was a, that was, you no, know, it was still going long, you know, crossings and we'd moved over the midpoint of the bondage band. Look, that looked like that was going up. But the stochastic here is saying we're going down. Well, it did the next day, but not very much did it. We turned around and we back into this. So we're still overbought. So we're not short. We're not short. And it's only saying try the next short there might be, but we move out the next day, which is there. And that's captured that little move down there and then that move down there. But then we turn around, but we didn't go overbought and then it's moving back up. So another good in another good example how sometimes it doesn't work. Now, she said, I trade on lower time frame using stochastic on higher time frames for confirmation. OK, that makes sense. Um, it happens that at the time of the trade, the higher time frame SCAC will be confirming the trade. But when I'm reviewing my trades at weekend or month end, I realize the higher time frame stochastic will be different from what it was at the time of the trade. It causes that the back test is always different from the live trades. Well, that, that's exactly because remember what happening in the Guashi. It, it's capturing data all the time and it's updating. So if you're going to use the monthly, you need to use the previous month, not the month you're actually trading in because that is finished that's confirmed and all that data is collected you can't confirm the two because the monthly um so the daily one is is the intraday one uh but you've got to wait you can't that day that data for the day 
isn't complete until the day's over or the, the data for the hour isn't complete until the hour's over. So that's why you've got to be very careful when you're trading that sort of way. So that, you know, when I'm looking at uh, on the higher time frames, for instance, when I'm looking uh, what, you know, if I was looking at my monthly chart now, uh, September's not finished. So I need to go back to August and July to give me, you know, what's what's the longer term trend doing. Uh, and so it is uh, with any back testing. OK, you've got to be quite careful with that when you're, you're using higher time frames to confirm uh, entries or trying to then retest. Now, then, let's, this is actually this is quite a good example as we've, as we've got here. We've got a lot of volatility suddenly coming into the market here. And so what the what the stochastic is telling us here is that we're going sideways and that's what's happening here. See, we've gone up, we've gone down. Yeah, there's a bit of an action there, but it's got oversold. So we're up to the top down to the bottom up to the top but we broke up but we haven't turned around so all this action here you can see this big price action here we we're going all the way up to 132.15 and we spiked now in this hour all the way down to 130.96 uh, hasn't really been captured by this has it so again it's a good example again all indicators tend to be a, there's a little bit of a lag in them as well so here, what would have been happened here? Well, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't actually have a trade according to this, would we? We wouldn't be lot. We wouldn't. It hasn't really got overbought. Hasn't certainly hasn't got over. Sorry, oversold. You know, it's dipped in, dipped in, dipped out. But you know, they're bottoms of the trend today, aren't they? Each time we're in there, that's a bit of a short-term one. That's a bit of a. You know, the cross was over the 20, so it's not overbought at all. But it, the trend is going up. You know, so you take that one up, crosses here again outside of the 20. So it's not really a signal. Ignore it, leave it. But the trend has continued. We broke over the 50, but, you know, haven't got above the 50. Certainly haven't got into the oversold. Now we turned around aggressively. So it rejected the 50. So again, no real signals there because of this um, sideways action. And because remember, it's measuring momentum. So the momentum here isn't in any direction. The momentum before... Has, has driven it or the price action has driven up and we've been you know here we broke over into the oversold area as we said earlier sorry overbought area can my oversold and no, <laughs> mixed up here the, so here we got price going up but the stochastic just going sideways because we're into this oversold zone so we're watching it watching it but don't get in too early you know it uh, didn't cross there, it didn't it cross there, but dipped down for an hour and then went back up, went back up, and then it, the final cross was there, and then we came out of the there, and then we you know it didn't go down very far, did it? Although this is con the momentum has continued down, didn't get very many pips out of that one, dear. Look at those little candles. So again, nothing, nothing works all the time. So uh, just obviously bear that in mind, and I, you know that's a great example of massive volatility there. But because we're measuring momentum, the momentum hasn't changed. The momentum's pitching around this midpoint, this 50 neutral zone. So it's neither long nor short, really. These extremes are just that. And that's a good example of like, there's no more sellers down there. No more sellers there. No, re you know, the sellers might come in here or the, sorry, the buyers are coming in here at the bottom of this channel. So that momentum hasn't gone to the extreme. We haven't been overbought and we haven't been oversold since, 11 o'clock last night that's really you know it has a little bit but nothing of any significance and that is explained by these sideways action in the candles what is the best indicator that helps you not to get in too early depending on well, the best indicator um as i say every tuesday uh, patricia uh, my fallback is always the 20 period moving average whether i'm training on a one hour chart uh, or the particular, and my for my money, my cash is the 20 period moving average. Okay, that's the one I hang my hat on. Uh, take it or leave it, and then I add other things to it, and that's the basis of my day, my end of day trading system. Okay, I'm not saying that's the best; it's the one that works for me. Okay, um, as I say, this little one hour system with these EMAs, these nine and the five, works really well on, on the one hour system as well. But again, it depends how. You know how often you want to be staring at the screen. Uh, you know, four hour, it works very well in the four-hour time frame as well. Um, but you know, I know people that trade off two-minute candles um, and do very, very well. They're in and out for a few hours a day. Um, you know, 10, 20 pips. Thanks very much. Close the position. I'm off and go and do other things because you know that's what it should be all about. 
part of your trading plan should be, you know, why am I doing this? Not just to make money. Anyway, I hope that was useful. I've run over time as ever. As, uh, so that's stochastics, uh, nice momentum indicator, not just the over sold, not just the over overbought, nice momentum indicator. Watch the divergence. The divergence can be very, very rewarding as well, but it's a bit, a bit sometimes a bit more difficult to indicate. Okay, very powerful tool, been around for 60, 70 years. Uh, and uh, very, very popular. How do you get the 20 period moving average on the MT4 platform? Preferred indicator for scalping, says David. Um, scal let's answer David's question first. I like, David, when I'm scalping, or if I'm scalping, I, I like the Haken Ashi candle set up on the five minute and the one minute time frames. Have a look for um, our webinars on that as well. It's, it's quite, a, um, quite a nice little clean system. Uh, you use that as well. Well, great. It, the only downside with the Heiken Ashi candle is the, it, remember, it's, it's, a, it's a weighted candle. So the candle might close, but the price will be significantly, well, be different from the close of the candle. So bear that in mind as well. But it's a very clean, powerful trading tool, Heiken Ashi. Uh, Caleb's asked, uh, how do you get the 20 period moving average on your MT4? Well, it's very, very simple, um, Caleb. And uh, watch our, how to set up your MT4 platform as well. But let me just answer your question. So this is the set. So let's let's start with a new chart. So file, new chart, Caleb. I hope you're watching. Uh, so there we go. When you open a new chart, it defaults to the one hour setting with the grid. And this is a, 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 a it's not a candle chart. It's uh, actually zoom in. It's a it's a high open, high, low, close bar chart. OK, so to insert anything so you want to insert something to this chart so you want to insert an indicator now the moving average the different types of indicators one we've been talking about today is an oscillator so the stochastic as you can see there's lots of different types of oscillators and last week we talked about the williams percent and the cci another oscillator that works in the same same sort of way but a moving average is a trend because that's what it is so it's a, it's a smoothing of the averages so so indicate trend Moving average, what sort do you want to indicate? So you can have the time frame. So you change the time period to the one you want to put on it. So what did you say? 20. So we want a 20 period. Um, depending on the time frame you're trading, I if you, you if you're trading below a day level, use the exponential. This is what I do. I'm not saying it's the best thing to do. Uh, in, use the moving average method. It needs to be exponential. Okay, because it's just more. It's more. It's weighted to the least less. less the latest time and therefore uh, is a bit more, uh, what's the word, uh, a bit more responsive than the simple. But if you're trading up on the daily time frame and above the daily, weekly, monthly, uh, you can just use the simple. There's not a great deal of difference between them, but there we go. So the time period you want to check, uh, the type of moving average and the color you want. So here it's defaulted to corn flower blue. So if we click that, all now then this is showing that over the last 20 periods, this was the price. So you add up the last 20 periods and it's weighted towards the last one. So here on this one hour time frame, we went over the 20 period. OK, so when I, on my if you want to watch, the, if you want to trade on that one hour platform I'm talking about, have a look at the exponential moving average, the EMA uh, intraday trading webinar. It's on there as well, Caleb, if that makes sense. So it's as simple as that. And it's the same with in certain the other indicators. So if we want to put the oscillator on that we've just talked about, so oscillator, so the trending ones uh, come onto the chart itself. The oscillators drop down underneath the chart. So the one we've just been talking about today has been the um, stochastic oscillator. So we click stochastic again. So this is set of default 533. Three. Colors are the black, green and red. So green for the green for the uh, K period, uh, sorry, red for the uh, signal line. So we say, OK. And then it bumps it underneath the chart. Okay. So again, lots of people. Well, that's that's a not a stand, not a 20 period, perhaps a 10 period EMA. People will use that for as well. So here, um, and this one's actually got the 50 on it as well. Because I, I, if you want to, you just need to amend it. So let me just do that again. Indicator list, stochastic. So if you, so that's how it, that's how it comes out default. So you can change these numbers, like I said. And then if you go to the colors, you can change the colors if you want to. And the levels you can add. So this one I've added the 50. Uh, so you can add another one and, and change the color of the line. It, normally it defaults with just the 20, the overbought and the oversold areas. Okay. 
How do you delete the Fibonacci lines, Nedson? What do you mean, how do you delete the Fibonacci? You just, uh, <laughs> right, it's, it's turned into a, a how to use your MT4 webinar, and I'm over time. But anyway, let me, let me I'll answer that in a minute, Nedson. Uh, so there you go. So you can add that. So that's what that 50 is there. So that's that. Right, Nedson. So if you, what have you done, Nedson? So you've put on a Fibonacci level, have you there? So that, that's the Fibonacci default. Okay, so that's the top. Well, it's not, is it? But on this chart, that's the top. Oh, actually, let me get. So. All you do, Nedson, is there. So you click objects on your chart. Let me do that again because you didn't see it. I don't think, did you? Close. So you go right click your chart, and the object list is what you've actually put on your chart. The indicator list are the things that are actually on the chart. So the indicator list is the moving average and the stochastic. The object list is that thing we've just put on, which is the Fibonacci. So that's what I've just indicated. That's what I've just put on, and I want to delete it closed there we go delete it and it's gone okay any more questions before i go i'm five minutes over no i'll crack on then okay so thank you for your time everybody again uh, any questions please do email us uh and tomorrow it's uh, tomorrow yeah we have some questions tomorrow it's a fascinating um set up with uh otto is going to be talking about donald trump and the foot and the dollar uh, which should be interesting Tuesday is always live analysis. I do uh, please join us. Thank you for that, David. I hope there weren't too many errors. I don't know how I do uh, all the time, but thank you for that. Uh, and on uh, Wednesday next week, this time next week, the Nectarios will be looking at the final quarter. The final quarter of the year is always very, very important. Certainly for uh, equities, it can be very, very bullish. Uh, and uh, Nectarios will be putting his thoughts about the uh, final quarter of uh, 2018 and then RSI next Thursday. Thank you for that, Patricia. I appreciate that. If you're in South Africa, do come and see us, okay? I'm, we're coming down to South Africa next month. We've got an expo, expo on the 3rd and the 4th in Sandon. There's a big uh, financial expo that we've, we've taken the stall at. Uh, I won't be there for that, but I will be there uh, live to do these seminars on the 17th in Polkawaini, uh, Durban on the 19th, and finally Cape Town on the 23rd of October. So if you're in South Africa or you can get to South Africa, do come and see us. You know, it's free. Uh, there's some obviously some great prizes and giveaways uh, and uh, we can meet and we can uh, shake hands and we can talk trading and you can listen to me talk for a couple of hours about stuff <laughs> uh, if you haven't got the app do download it's very simple it's very effective prices news uh, our analysis is all on there uh, book list uh, if you only ever buy one trading book I said this many times a week uh, buy this one the reminiscences of a rough stock operator by Edwin Lever yes it was written in 1922 but it's by far the best trading book ever written amen uh, if, you, if you're struggling with your psychology and your mental approach and emotion, and most people do, get Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Uh, both of these you can get as a PDF download if you're allowed to do it in your country. So you don't even have to buy the book, but I would recommend you buying the book. And the other, another real favorite of mine is the, the Market Wizards series. And the uh, New Market Wizards was uh, one of the first books I bought as well, along with all these as well. Elder and Van Thought were really good teachers of... Uh, equity traders and commodity traders as well. Uh, Benjamin Graham, the intelligent investor, has been around for years and years and years as well. Long-term investment is what Warren Buffett uh, trades by or you know, got him first started. But these are the three, uh, particularly these two, reminiscence of a stock operator and uh, trading in the zone. Trading in the zone is great. It, you know, master the market with confidence, discipline, and a winning attitude. That's all it's about. Prices can go up, they can go down, they can side sideways. That's all they do. Don't overcomplicate things. Mark Douglas helps you get your head straight. There's a great questionnaire at the beginning, at the end of this book. Uh, you do it at the beginning, read the book, do it again. And you'll see what you need to learn, what you need to, what you've understood and what you, you, where you go from there. It's a really, really powerful little book. Well worth the investment. If you're completely new to Forex trading, uh, Anna Cooling's wrote one of the best uh, introductions or beginners books I've read in a long time. Uh, she runs her own website with her husband, David, uh, AnnaCooling.com. Really nice little uh, well-written book and uh, two of my other favorite financial authors Michael Lewis and uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb uh, and I'm struggling I'm not struggling but I'm uh, it's halfway through Skin in the Game which is a fantastic read as well that was my book of the last year The Undoing Project by uh, Lewis and Skin in the Game is probably going to be my book of the year so far uh, but I, I also like uh, um, Delalio's new book as well Principles so I've just flicking through that I'm started reading it yet but there we go uh so uh emails at webinars hotforex.com send me a friend request to Stuart hot forex cowl on facebook and uh watch our analysis or read our analysis on our analysis page so thank you everybody uh i've gone on for too long thank you for your time again and uh we'll see you all again tomorrow with uh, 
Donald Trump and uh, the foreign exchange market. That'll be very interesting, won't it? Take care. Bye-bye.